everybody. We're back for another session. Hello, hello. Hope y'all are doing well. I um, hope y'all are enjoying everything. I mean, I'm I'm back here doing email support and tech support and all this other stuff and popping in, um, showing some support and love for everybody who's teaching. I hope y'all are getting a lot. Um, again, thank you. And I'm editing and moving everybody's stuff over to the a right place so y'all can watch it after the fact. Um, we had a little snafu there, but hey, such is the nature of when we do all this media ministry stuff. Um, and I'm hoping everybody's doing fine. Since I'm teaching, I can't jump over and <laughs> monitor anything. But hey, Shane, hello. We got a bunch of people in here. So today, my session right now is designing a video system. Um, now, I, I cleaned up everything behind me. I took my green screen down because um, let me zoom out here. Normally, I'm in the middle of building another system for a church, so I got a ton of stuff over here. But I kind of want to walk you through the mindset. And, I mean, if you've seen any of my videos on YouTube, I use a tool called Draw.io where I design everything. And um, I want to just walk with you and explain the mindset of what I do with this. And hopefully this will give you tips. Um, and this is, I'm catering this to y'all. Um, so if y'all want to give me an idea on something that you want to add in designing this, let me know. Um, and I'm just going to say for me class, and we're going to design something with draw IO. And for people to ask me, that is draw.io, the website. Now, I, you know, I didn't do, Hey, my name is AJ Holmes also known as AJ the CEO on YouTube. I am the acting president at Antioch Baptist Church for the media ministry. Um, and hey, we do this. I also run a company um, that's down below called Techno Babel LLC, where we help do integrations, tech training, and stuff like that for ministry. So what I am showing you is exactly what I would do with a ministry if they called and contacted me and hired me to help. And honestly, I like to give y'all this information so that y'all are empowered and y'all can do this stuff yourself if that is what you want to do. So now that I got my picture in picture working, let's go ahead and cut over to the monitor here. And I have draw IO set up here. And this is the system. Um, I mean, this is the design software that I use. This is the download one that I have, but it is just the website is draw.io to get to this. So give me some ideas, folks. Um, you know, we can always talk about the typical, but the main thing we have to start with is we got to have the internet. Now I'm going to assume, and I got somebody saying chat is offline. Um, so we shall see here. Um, give me some ideas while, unfortunately, let me, let me do a little tech support here. Give me an idea of some ideas of sessions or video systems that you would like me to design. I'm going to do a typical one, but we'll go into that as well to see what we need to do. Um, if this is my tip. I need to make sure we have some tech support people to manage this while well, I'm not here. <laughs> yeah, if you're having issues, please, with your chat, please refresh it. Um, I'm trying to go to the other ones as well, too, to make sure everything is good. My internet is fine. All right, chat. Chat is working for classroom two and classroom one. Yeah, not exactly sure. But anyway, let me get back so I can actually see what I'm doing so I can chat with y'all. I think I got two. I think maybe Comcast is having an issue. So anyway, let's go ahead and design a system, shall we? Um, I like this is how I like to do some stuff. So I always ask people what's the first thing they want to do. And of course, they want to live stream. So we'll just have our cloud here. And we just call that internet. All right. And then, you know, we, can you use Wi-Fi? Yes. But the best possible way is to have somebody run a hard line to wherever your main computer is going to be. So, you know, I'm, even though I'm looking at getting a Mac for training purposes, um, I, 
lean away from the Mac only because the power that you need, you can get significantly cheaper on a PC. And honestly, it, if you're running OBS, vMix, or whatever, the software part is fine. So I'm, I'm going to just say computer, even though personally I would do a PC. All right, so we're going to have a hard line there, you know, router, switches, all that other stuff like that. But let's start with our base. Now, you have two choices with this. You can do a computer, like I just said, or you can do like a switch, um, a video switcher like the ATEM, um, ATEM Mini Pro, the Extreme. So that re removes you needing to have an actual powerful system. You just need a system to be able to do some stuff. But let's come here. Um, JHB, well, let me make sure. What's the website? Okay, yes, that. Uh, JHB was saying three PDZ cameras, an audio board, podium mic, crowd mic, musician mics for streaming service. Okay, let's start with that. So obviously you need the internet. Let's do three cameras. And he said PTZs specifically. So you have a couple of options on your PTZs. You can do IP-based ones that require internet and then the joystick connects to them over the network or you need to have them daisy chained and connected together. I would give you two options for that. So we're gonna get a network switch here for the internet. And I mean, excuse me, for your network. So we're gonna connect that here some way, shape or form. Obviously that's gonna be hardwired. And then each individual camera needs to be connected. Maybe I should have put these side by side to make it work a lot neater. So these are all connected on the network. They're connected here. And then you have, <coughs> excuse me, you also have your joystick connected. Now, this is an IP-based system. It sends control and network and you know if this is a poe switch power over ethernet you only need one cable to get network access control access and power to each one of the cameras that does not now let me add something if you're using ndi which is a protocol to where it can send video and audio over your network you can get away with just this and then have a computer running obs or um vmix or any of the programs that support that and it will see all of these cameras on the network and that's how you can get your three camera systems jhb now when you do a setup like this i'm gonna do this for a um, sound mixer <coughs> excuse me you're gonna have to connect this some way to your computer, whether that is like an audio interface, like a Focusrite um, audio interface, because most of the time you're coming out of XLR, quarter inch cable, something like that. So the mixer will go into that interface and then this cable will be USB. And normally I color code these to make it easier for y'all to see. I'll do this as red, a USB cable or something goes into the computer and then that's how the audio. Now, doing something like this is very specific because your computer and your network, if you went in this approach, has to be very robust to handle all of the data from the video going into the system. The computer has to be able to decode all of this, run the operating system, run the software, because you're using a software mixer over a hardware mixer, and it needs to be fast enough to sync the audio with that stuff at the same time. That is a lot for a computer to do. Um, it can be done, but it's a lot. All right. Now, this is the, um, and I guess I should save this, and I'll put the images up so y'all can see. And well, actually, I didn't finish designing what you're asking for, GHB. So, you know, your mixer is obviously getting all of your sound and everything. Yeah, actually, we did go over that, and that's it. And then the computer is streaming and we're bringing in everything and your computer is running some type of software because it's going to be the switch and it's going to decode all of this at the same time. All right. Now that is a software and NDI solution. So we'll call this, let's export this. And this will be, um, 
software NDI streaming. All right, I'll post that picture later. Um, here, that's in the solution. Now, the other way is you can still send power to the cameras, but the difference would be now you would need to um, have some type of switcher inside of this. Roland, ATEM, whichever one that you want to do, and I'll just say video switcher. Now, this is going to give you some benefits here because what we can do is now get rid of this audio interface and now you need to run each one of the cameras into your switcher, run your audio into the switcher, and now this switcher, excuse me, is now handling syncing up everything correctly for you. Um, um, Eduardo, this program is draw.io. It's on the website, draw.io, and you can download the version so it stays on your computer as well. It's completely free. Um, and I'm going to get back to you, JHB, with this. Um, so that's the sound. And then the video switcher goes to the computer that will run streaming software or like with the ATEM Pro and higher. Instead, this will actually just go to the internet directly and it will stream. You have multiple options. All right. So that is, oh, and actually I didn't mention. And then for the control of the PTZ, these are daisy chained into each other. So one connects to each. So you don't have to run cables to everyone. But that is how this joystick would control all of them. All right. So let's export that one. And I'll come back here and um, video switcher streaming. And I'll save this and then come back and add the labels and everything like that so that um, you have a good reference. All right, that was JHBs. Let's go back to the next one. Um, Team RHO is asking for two in-sanctuary TVs and one stage display and three cameras. So still playing with that. Once you start doing this, and honestly, I'm, I'm biased, but if you were going to me, this is what I would suggest. I would not go to NDI approach for this because when you start adding that stuff, you're going to need even more powerful computers. So again, wants to add three TVs. All right, so we're going to add a, let's grab a, laptop just for right now. Well, actually, no, let's just copy this image here. And we're going to say this is our streaming PC for right now. Let's copy this and we're going to call this our presentation PC or computer, whichever one. All right. So for this, we're going to have TV. So when you said a back, a stage display, that's going to be something completely different. All right, so we're going to have our two TVs here, left, right, and stage display. Now, stage display normally does not show you the same thing. It shows just a message for anybody on the pulpit in a choir so nobody else can see. Now, there are a couple of ways to do this, all right? So for a stage display... This is in your presentation system. If you're using the ATEM, that's what I'm going to stick with unless somebody wants me to do something different. Um, how I would do this is I would run a video out directly into the stage monitor because you're only going to have one. Your software needs to support that. Pro Presenter, Presenter, the paid version of Presenter does that. Pro Presenter, once you pay for it, it supports it. OpenLP, um, Easy Worship, I believe they all support them. So that would can be connected there and set up as a stage display. Now, if we are doing the video switcher, I would run this computer as another input into our video switcher. All right. So now the audience, the lyrics, everything like that is going in. So this is going to say audience display. And then this is stage display, all right? 
and your presentation software handles the differences. Now, with your video switcher, this actually now has a line out HDMI, SDI, whichever one you want to do, is going to be connected to these TVs. And I'm trying to have my stuff organized. I liked it this way. All right, so now the video out. Maybe you should be color this so it makes it easier for you to see. The video out from the switcher is now going to these displays so they are seeing whatever you're mixing, just like you're seeing right, me right now. I'm using the ATEM. You are seeing the mix go to you, but it's also going to be displayed in the sanctuary if you want it to do it that way, all right? But the back screen is never going to see anything that's coming from the switcher because it's directly connected to your presentation system. It is only showing a stage display, all right? Hopefully, y'all get that, all right? We still have the same three camera setups. You can replace these with PTZs or any stationary cameras. They still have to be hooked up the same way. But all we're doing is now using the video switcher, the intelligent one, to broadcast to your TVs or send a video signal to your streaming PC, which is streaming, or you have a switcher that natively has it built in to stream itself, all right? Hopefully, that answers your question, team RHO, let's go down here and see what other I answered. Eduardo, JHB, does it make a difference if the audio board goes to the computer or routes through one of the cameras? It no, but it depends on your network. If it's not fast enough, you might have a problem with that. When I started, I ran all my audio through the camera because that's what I had, and that works. You just need to compensate for it. You do tests to make sure it's in sync. And nothing gets behind because audio is a lot easier to compress than video. That's when you start having the Kung Fu flick where the audio comes faster than the video if your system can't keep up. But there really should not be any difference. Um, next one, there's an audio delay in the software setup, correct? It depends. Um, if your system is fast enough, you don't have an issue. Um, depending on your software, OBS, the ATEM natively, Roland does it, um, vMix has it. If you do have a sync issue, you can use those devices or software to put a delay and force it to be in sync. There's also a Behringer Shark sound destroyer that allows you to delay audio as well. So there are hardware and other solutions to do that. Um, another question, what if you don't want the audience to see themselves? Okay, that's the, the same setup that we did at Spring Creek. So what we would do with this is kill the connection from the switcher here. And now you would have to have an additional display from your presentation system, or you can split it. So we're connecting to the switcher so that people can see the graphics and stuff on the live stream. But then we have a, another output going to from that same system to the monitors in here. So now the only thing that anybody would ever see on the monitors is from your presentation. They would never see anything from the camera. The only way somebody would see something from the camera is if they were at home watching something. All right. Now let's flip this on its head here and let me save this image out here as well. Three screens. No on camera people and I'll know to do the other one as well too now say you want to and let me erase all of this and let's make this a lot cleaner so what if, what if you wanted to have a distribution and send video throughout the entire building you want and let's do the same thing that y'all just said we want to show everybody on the screen because say you're not in the sanctuary you you're in an overflow you're in the kitchen you're in the trustee office counting money and but you still want to be able to see the service now you're going to have a half a mixture of that. So let's start back with our video switcher. We're going to have our cameras and I'm going to get um, simpler cameras for my demonstration purposes here. That was a big camera. So let's do three of these here. 
They can be PTZs or whatever. If they're PTZ, no, that you have to have a control. I'm just not going to draw that. That'll be connected, 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 and for size, well, I'll do computer. That's fine. Um, we have a computer for presentation. This one is for streaming. So this is going to go out to here, but this one is going to go in. All right. And say we have some televisions. Am I spelling it wrong? It must be. Let's just go with TV. All right. So let's go with some TVs here. and say that these are sanctuary TVs. So again, and I guess I should have put the presentation system on this side. So again, we have presentations going here for the audience or for the live stream, but we have them going to, and I'm just going to make it simply, I'm going to do a splitter here to make my drawing easier. So this would be like a distribution splitter here because if all the TVs are showing the same thing you don't need to run an individual cable to each one you can just run one and then split it as long as there's no delay so that would say these are all the TVs inside the sanctuary um, and this will say this is a SDI splitter or HDMI splitter depends on how close you are but say you have other TVs in the other building all you would do is the same thing you put a splitter just like we just did and you would run that connection over to the other room. Other room, other rooms, whatever. Um, now, that can get a little costly if you're doing SDI because you need to convert it from SDI to HDMI. Other thing that I've done before is there's a box called a RF modulator. It's just like back in the day when cars only had tape players and they had CDs. You can put a CD adapter in there that would convert it or like a... a uh, a modulator inside of your cigarette lighter that would make it like a faux radio station so you can turn the radio to that and it bridge the gap you could do the same thing but this is an HDMI RF modulator and how this works is it would go to the regular distribution inside of a building for coax that you have with TVs that they still do that's already in there but it would convert the HDMI out from your video switcher into a channel that you can set the TV to. And then you just connect that, the coax out from this cable into the distribution that's in your house somewhere. And then you can hook up as many TVs as you want. You just split the coax signal and you change this to whatever channel and you're getting video and audio. That was a very, very simple way that you can do that. Um, and I've installed that. I've used a Thor um, HDMI modulator. I did that at my home church. I've done that at Fifth Street. Now, the benefit of this, every time you add a device in between the main source, it takes processing time. So it slows down. So again, I did not recommend putting this inside the sanctuary because it's going to take time to process this and it's not going to be in sync. This is going to be great if you have TVs away from the sanctuary where there's no source connection to the main sound. Um, that way, if it's delayed, it doesn't matter. If it's 30 seconds behind, it doesn't matter because there's no way for you to actually see what's going on live. You're still going to hear it. It's not going to be 30 seconds. It's more going to be like five seconds, five to three seconds behind. You know, that would be annoying if you, somebody was on the pulpit talking and then on a projector, you saw it three seconds later. That's why I would not do this RF modulator in a place where you have direct access to sound. This is where it's no speakers, no nothing that you can bleed over sound into. All right. And then, like I said, you can add as many of these as you want because it's just cable and then a monitor. And, you know. And that will make that really easy. So any other questions on any type of layout? Now, 
you can expand on this as much as you want, and I don't see any new comments in here. Let me refresh here. Um, and see. Any other questions on here? Oh, and there's my sound. Um, let me know if there's any other stuff that you'd like me to do in a design. Because, I mean, that's really it. This same thing you can shrink down with using an ATEM Mini, and you're using this for a portable solution, or you can get so much bigger than this. Um, Eduardo wants to know how to input an NDI feed into the ATEM Mini. Directly, you can't, um, because... Black Magic and the um, TriCaster, tri um, they're, comp they're competing comp companies. So then I doubt Black Magic is going to natively support NDI, but you would need to do a, a workaround. Say you're sending it to another computer that's, OB that's running OBS, and then you can make it full screen and then send that into the ATEM over a physical connection. That's the only way you would do that. But by the time you do that jump, that would be a lot to do. Um, Team RHO wants to know, any recommendations on streaming PC versus the presentation PC video card? Um, honestly, the streaming PC, you really don't need one. I'm actually building a system right now, and they're still very difficult to get um, graphics cards that are significantly overpriced. Like a good graphics card to do that, you could actually, it's costing how much an entire system would cost right now, unfortunately. Um, I, for a streaming system, I just use a GT710 just to get a display because that's the cheapest graphics card that's still available. And I just put all the weight on the processor. I get a good six to eight core processor and AMD Ryzen's that's what I stick with because they are just cheap and they're very powerful the Ryzen 5 1600 is six cores 12 threads more than enough horsepower to handle the live stream and everything it itself when graphics cards become more affordable then you can always replace the graphics card and then offload some of that for your streaming the presentation PC that is the difficult part, um, depending on once you want to add more than just the stage display. Um, the cheapest way that I think you can do right now is use a USB to HDMI adapter for right now. That's $15. That will get you there. And when you can find something available um, and then go with that. So like say, let's go over here and let me just show you. I buy a lot of my stuff from um, Newegg. So let's just check out what I normally would put is a 1650 or a 1660 graphics card in a system because, I mean, you don't, you don't need overkill. But, um, you know, I'm looking at it right now. This 1660, originally I could get this for 150 to $200. It's going for almost $500. That's, that's ridiculous. Um, that's just me. I, I no. <laughs> no, I, I would not do that um, unless you really, really, really needed that. Um, you know, because if we go here to the side, we would have four displays. And if you really had to, yeah, I mean, you would have to bite the bullet and go with that. But again, I think that's overpriced. That's just me. Um, Carl, what about... What about using the RTMP server to feed remote rooms? That can work too. Um, my issue with that is just the servicing of if that was an issue. Because now, unless you have it like this automatically starts up without having to press a button and all this other stuff, that could work. I'm just really thinking about a lot of the people who I'm dealing with, they're not the tech savvy. I want them to be a button press to get everything working. But that is an option. Um, I've done it before to where I collect, connected everything and did a NDI out, and I just ran a laptop connected to a TV and did it that way. That could work as well, too, because I just set the computer to automatically start in full screen, 
and it connects once the stuff is open in the sanctuary. That can work as well, too. Um, Jaquille, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Is it safe to say that the streaming PC and presentation need to be separate? They don't need to be, but me personally, I separate them because if one goes down, you've lost both. I like having them separate. That's just me. That's how I have mine set up. So it's times that ProPresenter has crashed on us, but the live stream was able to go. We just didn't have graphics and lyrics, which isn't a problem. That's just me. But, you know, if, if you don't have a lot of room, yes, you can run everything on it. Um, that's what I do when I do sporting events. Everything is running on my laptop, the streaming, the scoreboard, everything, because I don't have the space to bring multiple systems. So can you do it? Yes. If I had a choice, I would not do it, though. Eduardo, thanks. I'm already doing it with OBS. What do you think about doing it with NDI encoder? I mean, it, I mean that can work. I've, I've done it. Just like I said, I've done that originally before, um, before I did the RF modulator. Um, and it went, it's technically almost like you're streaming to another room, and that can work. Um, Team RHO, how does the USB to HDMI work? Does it act like another HDMI on the same input? Yes, it does. That's exactly how it works. I think I don't have another one directly here in front of me because since I have my stuff connected right now, it I can't show it as another monitor. But yeah, normally this would plug in and it would show up just like another display. That's all it would do. Or if you had one that's separate. So let me let me pull up the exact same one that I've used. So if I come over here, this is the exact one that I've used at a church um, at actually Community Independent. This was plugged into one the HDMI out, went for the audience, and then this one was going to the stage display. And that's exactly how we did it. Um, and again, it was $15. Because, I mean, if it doesn't work, it's $15. But again, you know, would I hook this up and play, you know, The Witcher 3 or some games on that? No, I wouldn't do that. This is just for presentation, still images, maybe some light video, something like that. But I would not do any type of serious stuff on top of that. Um, Eduardo also would like to know, what about using splitters to present in multiple screens? I mean, you can do splitters for that, but the screens would be all the same. Just like I had in my scenario of um, SDI splitters. That's how I would do it. If I have the exact same image going to all of the screens, then yes, I would do that. Now, one other thing that I've actually installed at a church is an intelligent video switcher. Um, that is by Blackmagic. And so this is like a smart video hub here. So what this does, you connect multiple all of your inputs into this and all of your outputs. So it is almost like a smart switcher a little bit um, because you can have, say you have 20 monitors throughout the entire building, but you have, um, you take every input, every camera, every computer goes, goes into this, and then you route the output of the given input into your switcher. So those are the ones you can control in switching. But say you have a TV in the nursery, you have a TV in the entrance, you have a TV somewhere else, you can say with this switcher, intelligently look at input number one and put it on displays one through five. Then put displays six through 10, I want them to say mimic the same thing that's inside the sanctuary. It gives you way more control. Um, than a, and you can't treat this as a switcher um, you don't have the flexibility of doing lower thirds and stuff like that. It's literally like a matrix of saying you have multiple ins and multiple outs, and you can mix how many go where. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. JHB, what are the major differences between the ATEM Mini products and the higher-end Blackmagic switches? It's mainly the feature set. Um, the Minis focus on HDMI connections. Um, the other ones are mainly SDI. They're mainly rack mounted. They're not really meant to be super portable. Um, they have higher end functions. 
And then some of them, the higher end switches, they don't have encoders built into them. So that's what the minis have the advantage of. You need a dedicated system to stream off of those with a capture card and all this other stuff. That's the main difference, as well as how many inputs. I mean, you can go up to the Constellation, and it has, what, 40 or 80 inputs um, for that switcher. So if we come over here, so if we go to the ATEM, you know, we got these base ones right here. But then now you're starting having a little hybrid. You have a console here for the 4K version, and then you start coming into here. And like the Constellation, you get higher frame um, higher resolutions up to 8k and all this other stuff and i mean you got tons and tons of inputs so there's a reason for this um yeah you have 40 inputs and 24 outs so really really awesome and sorry we got a tech support Message coming in here. All right. Any other questions? Ben is saying audio input is the other. Okay. Awesome. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Team RHO, does it show as the same output or a separate display? Um, I mean, it depends. You, you can configure that, and it depends on, I talked about a lot of products, so sorry I missed your comment and what it um, corresponds to. But I say all this to say that once you get the concept of you have some type of video camera source that goes to some type of video switcher, whether it's software or hardware, that video switcher can send that out to something else whether it's the internet or another display. That's the simplicity of it. And you can double those overs more and more, but that's the base of everything that you do. Um, does anybody have any other direct questions? Because I think I am having to jump over and do some tech support here to make sure y'all can get to all the other sessions. Um, if y'all come back um, after this is loaded, I'll put the, um, I'll put the comments somewhere the images and everything that I've done. And what I'll do is when maybe tonight I will put out a list of products that I would use for all of that stuff as well too. So, man, it's, this, this conference is exciting, but, man, it is a lot <laughs> to get in place. Um, but we'll make sure we get uh, everybody set up if they're having any questions. Um, and make sure I'm going to get Jaleel on here because he's having some issues on his side. But um, any questions for me or anything else at all that y'all got for me? I think one of our classes got knocked out here. Yeah, I think we're good. But yeah, um, awesome, awesome. So again, sorry for me to cut this short. We got to make sure we get everybody else straight. Um, know that y'all can hit me up and email me at any time, questions at ajhomes.com if you have any other questions or drop them in the, the Facebook group. That's what that is for. This is a presentation for other leaders here in the group to share some of their stuff to help y'all improve y'all's media ministry. Thank you so much. And again, my apologies for cutting this short. We need to go get some other classes set up so we can get them straight. All right. So we will see y'all in the next session, folks.